I mentioned earlier, my mom is a retired business owner. My father uh, was a public servant for basically 90% of his career. Um, and he was also very involved in the community. So I had really great role models for what it was to, to give back. It was just very natural. Um, it, it was modeled for me on a daily basis. Uh, my father started an organization out of his love for basketball, the Chicago Dragons Athletic Association, which just celebrated 50 years uh, of uh, bringing people together. There were a lot of kids who had parents who were always working. You know, were, They worked odd hours with restaurants and everything like that. And my father became sort of surrogate father to uh, a lot of young people in the community. I mean, I can remember um, people needing to go to the doctor, he would take them. If they, you know, he took one, one guy to get uh, his first pair of glasses because he couldn't see how he was shooting the basketball. Uh, so this was something that was just, this was what was commonplace for me. If somebody needed something, my father was able to help, you know, his job with the city, put him in a good position to, you know, connect people to resources too. You know, I tell this story a lot. Um, when I was a kid, I didn't have a really great appreciation for my dad doing this really annoying thing when I was a 16 year old driving around the neighborhood, taking the long way home, when all I wanted to do was to get home and like watch 90210, he was driving around the neighborhood to make sure that the lights were working or that the service that he called in had been taken care of. You know, now as an alderman, um, you know, I have a, a much greater appreciation for all of that. The number of things that I cannot unsee is pretty pretty insane right now. Um, but that upbringing in the, in the neighborhood and what I'm, what I'm trying to do now, um, taking on this role when I hadn't planned on it, um, you know, I really look at it as an opportunity to give back to my community in a very specific way. You know, throughout my career, I've always been drawn to uh, the service of others. And I did that through the nonprofit sector. I did it in the private sector, not necessarily in the public sector where my father was working. Um, but uh, doing this now, it was such a unique opportunity. Um, and, and this point in history as well for our community um, seemed a little too good to, to pass up, at least throwing my hat in the ring. You're four generations deep, Chicagoans. You've mentioned a couple of times um, understanding the the plight of, of your uh, family uh, as immigrants. Often when I speak to um, my friends that are Asian Americans and we talk about resources mm -hmm. for uh, for the black community, for the Latino community, they off when we talk about the Asian community, often and it's and it's perpetuated by media, this model oh, immigrant yeah. mm -hmm. comes up. Certainly uh, in the immigrant community, and, and apart from the immigrant community, including Asian Americans, there's a need for resources. Can you share a little bit from your lived experience of this stereotype in regards to being the model immigrant yeah. and oftentimes being categorized as not needing the same um, resources mm -hmm. that other, commu uh, other uh, communities of color, like beginning with black and, and brown, need? Yeah. Um, I so appreciate this question because I think we don't talk about this enough. Uh, the model minority myth is really something that, as you said, media really created to drive a wedge between minority, ethnic minority groups. Like, so they cast Asians in this like, oh, they're so hardworking and earnest and you know, they're well behaved, they don't cause trouble, uh, juxtaposed to black and brown communities who are seen as the opposite. Uh, and the reality is that you know, Asian Americans are not a monolith. None of our communities are monolithic. You know, and, and the need uh, varies depending on what generation you are, from what country you came, you know, if you were fleeing as a refugee or if you came here just to seek better opportunities. Uh, you know, my own personal experience, I can, I can tell you, you know, starting in the fourth grade is when I started to see this. I was, uh, I was at a magnet elementary school. I happened to turn in an assignment, like really sloppy. I thought I was gonna get into a lot of trouble for this. The teacher looked at it and she saw my name on it. She's like, well, this can't be hers. And like she gave me a pass on it. And then another time I was in, uh, I was in high school uh, and there's a program called Inroads. And you, you may be familiar with Inroads. Um, I, I sounded like an amazing program. There was like internships for high school students. And I went, I walked up to the information table to apply. And they said, are you African-American or Latino? I said, no, I'm Asian. I'm sorry, this program is not for you. It's only for, it's only for minorities. And I'm like, I am one. <laughs> um, so, it, and, you know, we are oftentimes used as the uh, sort of ethnic minority group of convenience. So when I, what I mean by this is if you are talking about diversity numbers, you'll include us in there. But when it comes to resources, to your point, the resources generally aren't there. Um, I think there's a statistic out there. I'm probably going to get this wrong, but it is just this startling that um, 
I think 0.1%, 0.01%, like a penny, uh, less than less than a penny of every um, dollar that is uh, invested in philanthropy comes to the uh, the Asian American community. I know I'm getting that stat wrong, but it is just that minuscule. I just use that to elucidate this whole notion that people don't have need. There's great need out there. Um, just because some Asians do better than than others doesn't mean that you should judge an entire group of people like that. In fact, when I applied to colleges, I applied to seven colleges, and the one school that I didn't get into was the one that I should have, uh, was the University of Illinois. Uh, because the, the competition, um, I was competing with other Asian students. And because our graduation rates are higher, the standards were higher for Asian students. Uh, and you know, I, I went to a great college. I loved Indiana University. It was the right place for me. Uh, but those are all things that you know I've had to face in my lifetime, um, having to do with this whole model minority myth and people making assumptions about what you're good at and what you're not. I'm like, I'm I'm not good at math. I was not one of those math Asians. <laughs> well-